Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we're talking engine oil and NASCAR. We are here in a hotel just outside of Charlotte Motor Speedway. The race, the Bank of America 500, was postponed. So I thought I'd grab Ron and Hank to talk a little bit more about NASCAR and engine oil. So guys, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves? I'm Ron Schneider with Sport Dimensions, and we've been fortunate enough to work with Shell, Penzoil, and the products since 1992. So we've done a lot of racing with them and continue now with NASCAR. Some of my co-workers were born in 1992, which just <laughs> makes me Gave feel like the old guy. Right? <laughs> and Hank? Uh, I'm Hank Larson, also with Sport Dimensions. I've uh, been around motorsports since 88, uh, all different forms of motorsports, but most recently uh, NASCAR last Oh, 10 years in NASCAR. We've done a lot today. We had an incredible tour of the Penske Garage. Got to see some behind the scenes at uh, Joey's shop, which was amazing. Really cool stuff. Um, but I want to kind of focus in on engine oil or motor oil, as most people call it. Um, when I do an oil change on a car, I, I use Penn's oil in my car, right? It's got all its formulations and it does what it needs to do. And, and what I'm really curious about is how does that oil that I put in my car, how is it different from what goes into one of these high horsepower NASCAR engines? Um, regarding Pennzoil, the, the properties in the off-the-shelf oil that you put in your personal car, those same properties are in the, full, uh, the special blended oils that Shell provides, Shell Penzo provides these race teams. Uh, it's just the formulation is different. Obviously, the viscosity might be a little less than what you would normally carry. Um, again, it's looking for durability, protection from heat, right. wear. It's not a long-lasting la oil in a race car. We run it for a, a race, a 500-pound race. It's changed out versus your personal car where you're going to run it for either three, five, or 7,000 miles. Right. So the durability needs to be incredible for 500 miles. Yes. After that, it doesn't matter. Where I need that durability and that cooling and all those properties for, like you said, three, five, seven, ten, even 10,000 miles. Yeah. yeah, you're not running your car at 9,000 RPM for you know four I, hours. Mine's not going to run at 9,000 RPM yeah. at all. Uh, so, I mean, you know that that's it it's just it's that high rpm the heat that's associated with that this the stress that's associated with that pens oil provides an ex exceptional oil for these race teams to to do as well as they do now one of the things that the oil does have in common is the oil i use in my car and the oil in these nascar engines is the oil that is built from natural gas correct that's correct so the pure plus technology which is the latest generation of our technology in the pens oil oil it's proprietary for us um, it's made from natural gas so it's cleaner starts cleaner compared to a regular base oil so it's all about the clean uh, protection that it provides right. all those engines and back to your streetcar question a given bottle of oil on the shelf at a retailer or through a uh, jiffy lube or somewhere that put, does the work for you it has to work in many varied engines so it could be much more specialized right. in the racing scene um, so that's why we go to the extra length pencil and to start with something that's going to be clean and ready to be used in a lot of applications off the shelf. So instead of having to filter out all the junk and then add all the good stuff in, you're starting with the That's junk right. pre-filtered out. Yes. Exactly. And we're all always legally careful with what we can say, but it actually is 25% uh, cleaner than Mobile One, so that's done by third-party people, but that we've reached our goal with wanting to be the cleanest in the market, and here we are. Now, when I do an oil change, I, I drain the oil out. It goes into a big old receptacle and pumps out, and then the, the big oil tanker comes to get it. When and I, I'm assuming they don't do like random oil changes throughout a race or anything like that in a, in a no, no, not race. at all. Not at all. When yeah. that oil gets drained, what happens to it from there? Well, they will dispose of it properly, but oftentimes, if they look through the engine, uh, they will take random samples to check it because they can see what materials and metals fall into the oil from use. 
But again, it's not a long use scenario. Right. So this is a handful of hours. Exactly. But a it can be months. used if they see something in the inside of the engine. It can be helpful to analyze what's going on there. What particles fall in? Is there any foaming that develops or anything that happens to degrade the oil off the norm? So they'll, they'll send some of those samples back to Houston. Uh, our good friend Paul Bastian is there to manage that process just to help the teams right. determine what's going on inside the engine. Excellent. So uh, you mentioned foaming. What, what causes foaming? Well, heat contaminants that cause separation. You don't want oil to separate at all. Right. And, and you can actually see it sometimes if you guys take a valve cover, you'll flip it open after running it at, at speed and it heats up, yep. there'll be some foaming and separation. That's that's not a good thing. Yeah, so at 9,000 RPM for not, five not a hours good thing. straight, that's, that's probably right. a bad yeah, time. Yeah. So uh, contaminants, uh, so which also, you know, the filter helps too, obviously, a, a quality oil filter, right. so they go hand in hand. But um, if, if the oil gets too hot, it can start okay, to Okay, so that's degrade. a heat-related yeah. heat yes. thing. You, got, you start pushing 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, you'll start cooking the oil. As, you know, as we've discussed in the past, we, you know, we want the oil to stay at a cool temperature, but we do heat it prior to the start of every right, race. Right, that's we right. Get, we build up the temperature, and the reason for that is because we run a dry sum system where all the oil is carried behind the driver's seat. It actually takes too long for that oil to be pumped to the engine, you know, go through the normal cycle. You run the risk of hurting the motor because it, you're actually racing when it's not up to that optimum temperature. More importantly, warm, I won't say hot, warm oil generates additional horsepower. So we want to get that oil up prior to the start to about 280 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you hit 300, you'll start cooking. So there's that fine window yeah, of, yeah. of really good, incredible, awesome, and done. <laughs> yeah, there's the thermo, yeah, you'll right. see that at the track. You'll the have the generator, window. Right. generator behind the car, oh, up maybe an hour and a half before the start of the race, running, you know, generating electricity, heating that oil, and then there's a thermostat there, so the team is watching the temperature to make sure it doesn't cool. exceed that. Plus the fact that in, the, in a race, in, in a race environment, NASCAR environment, uh, unlike your personal car where you're carrying maybe four or five quarts, uh, these guys are carrying maybe, maybe uh, six, seven gallons wow. of, of oil. oil. Wow. oil. Yeah. So there's a much larger quantity of oil in that reservoir yeah. behind the driver's seat than would be in, in your pan underneath your yeah. motor. Yeah. Is there is there a certain amount of oil that's like quantity that's lost or burnt throughout one of these races? Hmm. I don't think there's much loss. Okay. No. Yeah. I mean, I mean and again, it's we're talking about the most efficient race. of the efficient. Yeah. You know, yeah. when when you're grabbing at tens of horsepower, you don't have any room for error in your yeah. efficiency. So, eight gallons. Uh, maybe not as much that's as that, but I'm, I'm, I usually say six to seven six gallons. To seven of oil. Gallon. Yeah, okay. yeah, that would make for an expensive oil change in a past. Oh, well, <laughs> but uh, again, you're moving that oil from the back to the right. front, back again. So yeah, I mean, the there's system holes. yeah, the system yeah. holds it, and you would need that much because you're constantly transferring the oil back right. and forth through lines. Not to mention, as you come into a turn, and yeah. your, you, your you, car's banked yeah. very heavily. I remember years ago. I haven't seen it four years in NASCAR. I mentioned ten years. I've been in NASCAR really twenty years, but. I remember in some races where we'd actually add oil during the race, but it's a long time ago. That yeah. you really don't see it much because <laughs> you could add it right, you know, in the side, right behind the driver's seat. But like I said, that that just doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, I had asked about what happens to the oil in NASCAR. That that's one thing, but you had mentioned to me earlier that in other race bodies, that's kind of a different scenario where maybe F1 because they have different. Engine rules. Can you ex talk a little bit about the, the engine? Well, rules? actually, uh, fuel in Formula One is what they there. Okay. There's a, there's a uh, thumbprint of what that fuel has to look like as far as its specific gravity and what's in the fuel. And really, that in F1 is about 99% street premium pump. Fuel. Right. So if I went so very got Shelby close, Power Nitro Plus, it's very all close. But that, but that one percent, <laughs> you could probably do quite a bit. With. Yeah. So they can yeah. tune that fuel. However, the FIA requires that that the fuel that they are going to use three weeks ahead, uh, they know what it's going to be, so that when they test those fuels, it better come out to be what what they submitted three it's weeks ago. Mind-boggling to the, me. I, it is. It <laughs> really is. But on the oil side, they're pretty free with oil. Okay. So as Tank was talking about earlier, what 
uh, Shell's value to Ferrari is they can literally help them with uh, preventing issues or failures in the gotcha. future because they'll do 40 to 50 samples during a Ferrari race weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, they'll take many, many samples from both cars and they can read, I think it's a spectrometer, what metals are in there, what's showing, and then if there's anything off the norm, that signals to the Ferrari engine engineers, we better look at this. Right. So they can help. Now they're down to what, five engines? Five engines. Maybe okay. four yeah, next five, year? Yeah, wow. five engines. They're, they're so, even thinking, so in so, F1, it's a preventative. Absolutely. In, in NASCAR, yes. it's a yeah, an, it's kind an of analysis a post of what analysis. happens. Yeah, e exactly. So, and then if different. I understand Indy right, that's the same stuff I cracked the bottle that, up and poured in. Zero forty off the shelf, off the shelf which product. is a great, great story. Yeah. And they're running high RPMs. They run 10, 500 typically. It depends on the track. Anywhere from 550 to 700 horsepower. Wow. Road courses, small ovals, kind of like NASCAR. They got right. the same kind of mix, but that is and is mandated to be off the shelf or available to all of us right. uh, to use in our own. So I can cars. tell everyone I use IndyCar. Absolutely, and oil oil ultra platinum. <laughs> use what Elio uses. Zero W forty weight oil. That's what they all use. But again, that's that is a that is the IndyCar series. Hey, you know whether you be running a Honda or a Chevrolet, you have to, in Chevrolet you have to run a Pennzoil product. In Honda, I have no idea which manufacturer, but it has to be off the shelf yeah, product. Yeah, readily available. I yeah. love those little like tidbits that you know most people don't realize. Which brings me to one yes. final question that I have, and I did a ton of research this morning and over the last week to find out the answer. Do you know what year NASCAR started using synthetic oil in their engines? Ooh! Wow! Uh, I synthetics in NASCAR. You know, right? I don't know. I you couldn't find know? the answer. I, I would not. I would not know. I would not know that. I'm gonna take a wild guess. So that actually, <laughs> that actually will wrap us up. Then, in the comments section, if you know no. what year NASCAR started using synthetic oil. Post it and let us know. All right, guys, we are going to wrap it up there. Ron, Hank, thank you guys so much for chatting with us and dropping a bunch of NASCAR knowledge. And uh, hopefully we get the answer to that uh, first synthetic use oil. Yes. That would be awesome. Yes. Guys, if you have any questions, you know what to do. Hey, if you like this video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course on Snapchat. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. And a special super shout out to my main dude, Eric the Car Guy, or in this case, Eric the Camera Guy. <laughs> <laughs>